Hey, this is Stacia, and it's time for another training game on chess.com. Um, just got done teaching for the day, teaching chess, of course. <laughs> so now I'm ready to actually play chess. Because, you know, more chess. More chess, that's what I want. So we're going to play a 15-10 game. It's a little fast for me, of course, but we're going to do it. Um, I just did 64 tactics puzzles with one of my students, Aiden. So I think I'm already warmed up. So let's go. I'm going to play E4. I really should play D4 occasionally. Um, but not this game. Okay, they're going to go G6. Let's take the full center and play Knight C3. Because I don't want to commit my knight in front of my F pawn yet. Okay, I'm definitely going F4. Let's see what they want to do. Okay. Now if they castle, I'll go E5. Uh, for sure. And... Recapture. Okay, and let's see what we get here. If knight d5, I go bishop c4 there. I'm just playing moves that I've played in Blitz 10 million times. That's Bolivia. Bolivia. Hmm. I mean, that move is a move. And then after bishop c4, in Blitz, a lot of people take here, which I think is a mistake. Like, why give me what I call the Vienna pun chain? <laughs> so let's see if they want to do this. And if they do, I actually like these positions a lot. I get them in Blitz often, and I frequently win those games. But I think object objectively, it's, you know, kind of double-edged, I would say. Maybe white has an advantage due to space, but black has serious chances to break break down the center and um, proceed that way. And of course, I would intend on just castling kingside. And okay, so I do this. I'm happy to see this. And I mean, I have to, I have to, I just feel like white's a little better here. And uh, I don't know if that's true, but it, I think it's true. <laughs> so. Alrighty, so, um, yeah, so on my agenda is castle queenside, maybe something like knight g5 to e4, maybe even bishop g5, maybe even a slower plan like bishop e3, queen d2, and trade off the, the bishop, that seems too slow. So let's try to find the best moves for them, though. I think... I'm most worried about them breaking down my center early. Something like c5 is annoying right off the bat. Although I have it protected quite well. So maybe they don't need to do that. But if they do go c5, they can then play knight c6. Applying more pressure to d4. And they've got pressure here as well. So c5 to me is probably the move I'm most concerned about. There's also the move e6, which is probably just bad, honestly. <laughs> like, it blocks my bishop, but then I go here. Like, my bishop's not good no matter what. I mean, I don't know. I usually put it on d3 and just say, like, like he's just going to stay here and wait and see if this structure cracks. <laughs> like, uh, but th I don't know if that's the right way to play it, but that's what I typically do. Um... I mean, I would just think that's c5. So, wow, I have 16 minutes. That's like the first time ever. So I'm kind of happy to see this. It blocks the c pawn. I mean, if they're going knight a5, I will play bishop d3. Because then it's like, why is your knight there? You know what I mean? So knight c6 is not exactly the scariest move. So I could probably just castle without thinking here. And I think I will. It's just a useful move. My rook comes to the... Semi-open F file. It's called semi-open because it's open for white, but it's not open for black, right? There is a pawn here, so it's semi-open. Yeah, and they go for this idea, which feels very shallow to me. But I guess they could play C5 now afterwards. Is the one thing. I was thinking bishop D3 here. I could also consider this and just trade it off. I could consider it. I mean, here's the thing. If I go bishop d3, 
they could tr play bishop g4 in that moment. Honestly, I'll go h3 and challenge them, I think. I think I'm more afraid of the bishop coming to f5. So I'm going to go here and stop that move and also leave the bishop or the bishop leave the knight on a5 where he's kind of like doing nothing like why is he there why is he there was he there to capture my bishop because uh if so he failed <laughs> it's really that simple so um okay now i want to look at the position though I have a lot of ideas because I get this a lot in Blitz. Looks like I have some kind of notification. Somebody wants to be my friend. Sure. Let's be friends. I'm not one to turn away friends. Kids, you should turn away friends because you don't know if they're evil people or not. Me, if they're evil people, you know, I'll punch them in the face. It's going to be okay. But you're just a kid, so that might not work. <laughs> so, and your parents won't like it. So, you know, adults, you know, accepting new friends is good. Kids don't accept new friends unless they're kids like you and you, and they're definitely safe people to know. B6. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I... Okay, it could be a real move. I shouldn't scoff so easily. I mean, they might even play something like knight b7 and c5. It's a slow plan, but it will uh, support c5. Not that I would take anyway, though. So that's silly. So they really are going to go here. That's not even possible. So they're going bishop b7. I don't think I care that much. Probably, what do I do? What do I do here? Do I go bishop g5 or do I go knight g5? I don't think I like knight g5 yet. On knight g5, maybe h6. It does provoke a little bit of a weakness, but it is well protected. Maybe the king comes to h7. So on knight g5, and then I get here, and I don't really have opportunities just yet, although I don't think that's a bad square for the knight I just think that it's not it's not like amazing and this bishop is not developed yet I could go here it's a move but then c5 and I don't want to take it so that seems silly so bishop g5 is definitely the move I'm leaning towards here and if they play h6 I think I'll just play bishop e3 there Supports my center in the event of c5. So let's let's do this. In the meantime, it creates this little pin here, and 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 it kind of stops. Well, it doesn't stop e6, but if e6, they have to worry about control of the f6 square, and that is something that I want very badly. So I just might, um, if they play e6, you know, I just might start putting some pieces into f6 if I can. I might even sec a rook. You just never know what I might do. I'm pretty sure I had a blitz game where they played e6 and I just went like, boom, like just rook f6. Because, I mean, if you take that and let a pawn get to f6, that's just crazy, right? Then then I have a very simple plan. It's called queen f3, queen h3, queen h6, queen g7 checkmate. Um, of course, you have to calculate, make sure they can't like win that pawn. But that's called Lolly's mate, or as I like to call it, the lol mate, LOL mate. Because that's what it feels like. It's like, hey, I got a pawn here. I'm just going to stick a queen on g7, and that's it, mate. <laughs> it's like the simplest, like, checkmate, but it's also powerful. I mean, <laughs> you can't really argue that it's, uh... okay, they moved, and I wasn't even noticing because I'm being silly. So let's get back in this game here. Bishop b7. I did expect this move. Mm. Bishop b7. Queen g4. 
Queen D2 definitely comes to mind. Rook B1 is a move now as well. They can try this. This could be a thing. It would pin my knight and be slightly annoying. I'd probably go queen e2 there. So maybe I go queen e2 immediately. That's one option. Um, does connect my rooks. Connects my rooks and it prepares bishop e4 to challenge the diagonal. And if they do take, and I take here, I actually look, I like that. It's improving my queen. My queen wants to come to the king side. So queen e2 is a move. Also queen d2, but that doesn't support this. It supports that, which I don't care about as much. That is not exactly the world's best bishop. So queen e2 is the move I'm thinking about. I'll probably just play it because this is not, I don't think this is a critical moment just yet. And if they take the knight, I was just planning rook takes. And we go from there. But I should be a little more mindful from here. Time to play chess. I still like the idea of bishop e3, knight g5. I want to do this. This is what I'd really love to do. Because I do think they will play e6 at some moment. To do that, they have to play h6. So bishop b3, let's say e6. I mean, they're really weakening the king side with that structure, though. So I'm not, I don't, that's probably not even the best plan. What is their best plan? It's c5. Okay, so this is what I should be calculating, right? Like c5. Um, so maybe I should think about putting a rook on d1 to sort of um, discourage this move. Does that do anything? Let's say they go c5 and I go, whoops, oh my gosh, I pre-moved that by accident. <laughs> that would be tragic. Okay, um, let's say they go c5 right now. I'm not going to take it, right? Like taking it is positional suicide. Like what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, I would make triple pawns and they're not good either. And just give, just gift them the D file. So on C5, I can't really take it. And they're close to trapping my bishop, except thankfully I do have this E4 square. So that's one good benefit of queen E2 as opposed to queen D2. So I don't have to, that's not going to come with tempo then because I don't have to move my bishop in that moment. But if they go c5, what would I really do? Well, I think I should continue with whatever my plan is. Too bad I don't know what my plan is. Rook b8, what is that? I'm very confused by how they're playing. I'm very confused. This is very slow play. I'm wondering if I can um, just play queen e3 because then it stops h6. And it also means I might come in here and take, take. I don't know, that's not, that's not, doesn't feel right. Um, you know, h4 might be a real move h4 like let's go let's go h4 um it does sort of um it adds to whatever king side thing i want to do which i don't know yet and the other thing i want to do though is just get my queen on the king side and i would love to play this move which i can't do at the moment so do I just go bishop e3? Because on bishop e3, c5, then knight g5 could come. I 
I don't know. I don't even want this trade, but it can't be bad either. Because that bishop is, um, that bishop has good scope. It's quite, it's quite good. I could play rook b1. Rook b1's a move. I just don't really see the point of it. Yes, yeah, so maybe it's not a move. So I got to figure out what to do. And they're playing slowly, which makes me want to find something really good. But I don't know what that is yet. Can I stop c5? That would be amazing. It's just that I don't have a b pawn. And um, actually, this might stop c5. Because after c5, I could play here. That would be a discovered attack on the rook. And then when they move the rook, I get to take a check. And that should be, I think, an advantage. I'm not sure. I think so, though. Probably only because the knight's here. <laughs> um, but also this pawn would become weak. So, you know what? Bishop f4 is a move. I just don't want to move the same piece twice here. Do it go h4, though? h4 is committal, but it's also... Am I really going to go h5? I don't know. On h5, if they actually take us, you know, opening up this bishop on h7 could be a real thing. Like, I know my bishop's here, but just imagine knight g5, queen h5, and suddenly they're in major trouble. So I think h4 is my move. It's weakening my king, but I don't see any pieces by my king. I see pieces over here. This this is the only one that means anything. So I'm doing this because I don't know what else to do. So if a coach wants to tell me why this is horrible, please do. What do I do from here, though? I just I need a clear plan. I don't really have one. I guess my plan is just h5. I'm really going for it. This is how I play chess, I guess. What happened to me? I used to be like a passive d4 player that just played scared. Now I play h4, h5 for no reason. <laughs> okay, what happened to me? What did Michael Jolson and Calvin Blocker do to me? No, I think they did a great job, actually. My chess is stronger. I lose a lot of games. I don't think it's necessarily from... Uh, lack of chess knowledge as much as performance issues, but I still have a lack of chess knowledge as well. Okay, so h6 here makes some sense. So I could play bishop f5. That blocks my rook, though. Bishop e3 is the move I want to play. Can I do that? gonna play it. I don't see anything immediately wrong with it. Okay, so go e6. This is what I thought they would do actually. So now I could go here and encourage king h7, but maybe that's not what I want to do. The other thing I could do is go h5. Could go h5. If they take it, I can play knight h4, but that loses a knight. So I don't know. I don't I think if I could play knight h4, it might be the right way forward, but since that's not an option. I kind of want to double rooks in that file. I kind of want to just play here and just brute force. Just I feel like that's a kid move. <laughs> that's what the kids would do. Um, the other thing I could do is go nice too and really try to get into f6. And um, that one seems a little more promising to me. They've already weakened some stuff by playing h6. So if I go here... Okay, if I go here, do they play h5? But if they do, I can get my bishop in here. And I'm on my way to controlling more f6. So I think knight h2 
is what I want to do here. It also opens up my rook. After h5, I could even just simply play back and put my knight there as well. It's another thing I could do, which I think I like better because in the event of f6 or f5, I have knight takes e6, so they would have to protect that. So I think I'm going to go knight h2. Okay, I'm spending a lot of time. <laughs> this is what I do when I don't know what to do. So... I should actually focus a lot more because why did I just spend so much time? Okay, so they're ahead on time. I think they should play c5. I've been saying this all along. They should still play c5. This is their counterplay, right? Like they have to play over here. I'm playing on the king side, clearly. When you got bishops like this, oops. And you got rooks like this, and you got queens like this, and you got knights like this. I think it's pretty clear where I'm playing. Wow, they took on h4. Okay, can they really do that? Can they really do that? That's my question. So, I mean, immediately I want to go rook f4. Just kind of what I was thinking. And I guess there they could go here. It's not checkmate because... A queen defends and I could also just play knight f3 at this very moment but I think rook f4 is the way to go rook f4 where are they going if queen g5 is rook, rook takes f7 immediately and I'm definitely playing this They're playing very materialistic. This helps me double. We might see what I was talking about. I very well might play that move at some point. It could happen. I want to just double. I don't see why not. So I will do it. Let's see what they do. The queen is protecting the rook, so is the bishop. So f8 is well protected. Um, I mean, knight g4 is probably what I'll do next, and I really do intend to just drop it in. Just check. And I feel like there's some play there. I accomplish that for sure so but if they go h5 they just weaken more dark squares um h5 could intend this move but okay so I'm gonna have to play like a little bit better than what I'm doing I think though and stay more focused this could get crazy here So I'm gonna think about this. C5, probably a good move. I'm not worried about it at this moment. If they go here, I guess it does trap my bishop though. Pretty annoying. I would have to go here and do this, which then the rook's misplaced, which is not what I was going for. So if I go here, I mean, if I go here, seriously, and they take, and I take, their queen must move. I 
let's just say here to put more pressure. Um, wish I had queen h5 there, but I could play something like Yeah, so why not just knight g4 right now? Knight g4 takes, attacks my dark square bishop, but I can play check. They take, I take, I'm attacking their queen. They must move their queen, and then I calmly take back. So I'm gonna play this. So unfortunately, I'm in a blitz situation. I can't believe that I do this every game. I have to remember that it's rapid, so I just should just play the opening like really fast. I play blitz all the time. I can find moves quickly, <laughs> so why don't I do it? <laughs> why don't I do it in rapid? It's a very good question. And one that is not related to chess, probably. Related to my own um, some some mental roadblock I must have. I've had it forever. I've made some improvements at times, and then it's like, I just fall right back into it. But at any rate, knight g4, I like a lot. I'm thinking... A pawn on f6 is very strong. So, I mean, if they want to take, I will take with this pawn. It's just super strong for one reason alone. I mean, <laughs> the queen can co then come to g7, it's mate. And, you know, like if you get, if you open up the file, you can, there's so much stuff you can do with that. A pawn, that's just a very strong pawn. So, so I'm definitely intending knight f6. And how do they want to stop me? is the question and I don't know I really don't know and they could play king of jade so it doesn't come with check <laughs> I don't think that's right but they could do it um wow if they do that if they went king of jade I think I actually do have rook f6 in that case because if takes takes attacks the queen Queen moves away, and then I can literally take here. And I can do so with a knight or a bishop. So that seems pretty strong to me. Not 100% on that, but definitely an idea. I should be thinking about what's the worst things they can do to me. This knight could come back in the game with knight to c6. But it's still not great. Right? It's still just not great. It does hit d4, which I think should be their main objective. They've been very slow to tear down d4. <laughs> so I'm kind of like suspicious if they'll even do it. And they're spending a lot of time here. Let's check out our opponent real quick. They did win the last four games. Hmm. They lost the four before that, then won four. Wow, weird. Kind of a weird pattern. And they started January this year. And so I don't know what their deal is. But it's a little suspicious. So this move, okay, so I went for this. So now if I check and they take and I go here, they can actually take here now because if I take their queen, they take my queen. But then I do take their rook with check. They take back. I have time to move out of the way. What is going on there? I mean, my feeling is it's okay. So let's see if that's true. Knight check, there, there. That's a trade. 
They take a bishop, though. I took a queen, they took a queen, I took a rook. I'm going to do it. Because I win the rook with check. If, if it wasn't for that, then I would not play it. I think this is okay, but yeah, what if they just go king h8? Um, uh, if they do that here, I just might go um, bishop e4. Not excited about it, but it's blitz at this point. It's better than losing a piece. I don't want to lose a piece. In a classical game, I would be looking at every single way to sack that. <laughs> I promise you that much. Um, they do go king h8, it's pretty interesting. So wait, I can actually take, right? Like, why not take? It's a pawn. If rook c8, I come back. They can then take my pawn. Does feel like counterplay for them, for sure. But, I don't know. Not... It's a pawn. I guess they can trade off their bad knight, and then I take. And then they get a tempo on me. So. Is this one better? Maybe. Is the answer. So I'm going to do it. The other thing I should consider is taking with a knight and put the knight into d6. That's another thing I can do here. So I think I will because by playing c4 they took the pressure off of d4. So now now I just have this like like that's just I just have it right. So, but now I should stop thinking and just start playing by intuition because we are close to a minute. So if I need to calculate, it's going to have to be fast. And um, my instinct is to take with a knight now. So I'll just pre-move it. <laughs> or I won't because taking with a rook just feels so awkward like my rook's terrible so I, I feel like a coach would yell at me for that they'd be like oh what is that what are you doing <laughs> so I'm just gonna put um mm. okay I didn't see this but this also weakens some squares it weakens um this square and this square which I want my queen there so now I'm very tempted to just put the queen here immediately And on takes, I take with a bishop. Eh. Hmm. They're checking the rook, which is defending it. Kind of makes some sense. Low in time. I don't think they have this because of here. Also, I'll just trade that off. If they take with a knight, that knight goes nowhere. But they've also created these weaknesses, which
like already I think I have rook ticks right like why don't I take take check I'm like how do you avoid checkmate it's happening so I do think that I'm threatening this right now so if they take this I don't have it because the bishop will actually protect but um so if they do take do I take with a knight I think I do they did this first okay that makes a lot of sense Let's go here. Attack that queen. The queen must defend. No, it, it doesn't need to. I like this bishop here, though, but it's not very stable is the problem. Um, okay, this is getting very complicated. I think queen h5 trick just wins if I can get it. So I still want to do this. Takes, takes. Queen h5 check. Here, here. Can I do this? I think this is the move. Do I take first? I think I do. Oh no. I'm low on time. I have to take, but now I'm worried that if they take with a queen, which they might, then this doesn't work. So take, take, check, and they have this like queen move then. But I could go here. And if they go here, then it frees up this idea again. Because take, take, here, check, here, here. I'm just starting to check me. There's no way around it. Um, I could even take with a bishop. Why am I not doing that? <laughs> it's a valid question, right? Oh, the reason is I want to play queen h5. So I'm playing it. I'm just playing this because it looks really good. And I have no time. So, yeah, take that. Do it. And if you don't, I'll just land it in there. Okay, and then I'll take here. Maybe I'll just play queen h5 first. Actually, I will. So, yeah, I think. Okay, interesting. Why can't I do this? I'm threatening this. They can't even really protect it because I just take it. And then I put the bishop here with check. This looks like me. So this looks good. I also have this idea. So I'm going to take here. I hope I'm not missing anything. I could be because, you know, I have no time at all. <laughs> it's blitz. Um, if I do this, they could take, take, I mean, yes, they're going to do that one. Okay. Threatening checkmate. I'm kind of expecting a sack now. I'm up material though, so it should be fine. I I'm really, you know, I'm going to do that. They resigned. Okay. Well, um, that was sloppy, horrible time management as well. But somehow we got the win. So yay. Thank you to my students who do lots of tactics puzzles with me. That's what I'm going to say about this one. Because uh, I feel like I was able to find some, some quick stuff at the end. And I feel like that's how a kid would play. Which is what I've been historically bad at. So, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So, but let's have a look because I'm also not happy with it, right? I did not play well enough to beat a strong player. And I also didn't play that great in time pressure, I don't think. So 
So I think I will analyze this one in depth, um, but I'm going to do so in another video. So I'll see you tomorrow when we analyze this game and learn something. That's the best part of improvement with me, Stacia. So I hope that you'll join me then. I'll see you tomorrow.